Let's assume that we have all of our compression members, we have perfect performance ratios. Everything's in that 0 0.8, 0 0.9 range. All of our tension members, we've done our work, we've, we've got three or 400 iterations. We've got all of our tension members there. There are some other members there that have numbers on both sides. What do you suppose that means? Find one of those, Jim. No, number 21 would probably be a good member to look at. That member shows it has some compressive force and tension force. That member is probably a diagonal that I can, I can tell you without looking, right? Everybody know why? Okay, well that member is what I would call a reversal member. As that truck passes across that structure, that member will have tension forces in it at a certain point. Once that truck passes that member, the stresses would go to zero and then back the other way into the compressive area or vice versa. So I always set those aside. We've dealt with the compression members. We've dealt with the tension members. Now we have to deal with those. We'll deal with those in the same manner that we did before. So Jen, you have to size this properly. So take the size down. We're still we're adjusting. Run the load test. And we just saved another $2,000. Still don't have a very good performance ratio, so you can take that on down. Okay, let's assume that we now have all of our members, all the compression members, all the tension members, and all the reversal members in the range that we want, right? We have we have the performance that we want from all of them based on size. Now we go.